it is for me a pleasure to speak with you and good Catholics and family fathers. This is the hope for the renewal of the church. Well, I consider this the greatest grace of my life to have been born into a Catholic family where both parents were deep believing Catholics, my father and mother, and not only them, but also the grandparents from both sides were very deep believing Catholics. And so I grew up in this ground, in this good soil, I would say, which is which I consider the greatest grace of my life, even more than the priesthood and the episcopacy. Because the Catholic faith, this is the greatest richness which we have here on earth. Because without faith, the true faith, we will not go to heaven. We will not fulfill the will of God. And, and therefore, so important and fundamental is the mission of the Catholic family. So, I received the Catholic faith, I would say, with mother's milk. And this should be done by all Catholic mothers. So, since I can, I can uh, think and uh, remember, I also, I always prayed. So, my, my first remembrance was a prayer which my mother uh, taught me and my father. So my, my first remembrance from my childhood, when I was maybe three or four year old, this was the, the family prayer. So we were all kneeling together. I was the youngest. We were four siblings and the parents. We were kneeling down and praying. So this was my first remembrance from my childhood. And I am grateful to God that I could receive these. And, and the other thing which I remember also that I was observing my parents praying also. So not only we together, but as a child I could see with how they pray by themselves before going to bed or in the morning. And so uh, this is first which I would like to share the importance of the family prayer and to teach the child since the youngest age to pray. And the mother uh, have, has to give as I repeat, with the mother's milk, the faith. And so my mother, she did this. She, when she was feeding us, and so uh, she always said a prayer, so that with this material food, God should already bless the soul of this child. So this did my mother. And and then before. My mother told me that she always prayed to God as a girl that God sends her a believing, a good Catholic husband. And so, and God gave her this. And so she was called Mary and he, my father Joseph. So Joseph and Mary, they met and, and both prayed that God will give them uh, the spouse uh, whom God had chosen. Therefore, I would start, when we speak about family, before founding a family, to the young people to, who are now preparing themselves for marriage and family, and even 
for example, my grandmother, uh, she always uh, said to her children, to my mother and my uh, uncles and, and aunts, uh, you have not to seek your future husband in dancing parties or and so on, but God will give you, when you will pray, the good spouse whom God had chosen. So did my grandmother, always teaching already, when the children were so teenagers, when they could already understand the problem, the, the, the issue of family and so on. And so this is also the task of the of the parents when the children are growing in to, in this age when they are already thinking about uh, marriage to say to them please pray already to the, now start that God give you the spouse whom He has chosen from all eternity and so. And the other, uh, it's also important, uh, you see this, the family is created by God. And this is a God, a creature of God, the most beautiful here on earth, because it is, because God had chosen the family to come to us, the holy family. And, and so I would only add, uh, 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 still this point uh, that to a family also is good to to include the grandparents so we have to to build up a culture of catholic generations so it is so important because it's an organic a creature of god and so it is good uh, when Grandparents are believing and giving their example also to their grandchildren by faith. Not only the parents, of course the parents are the first one, but also the grandparents. This would I also add. So, and maybe those who are now in your age, 40, 50 and so, you will become maybe soon also grandfather, grand, grandparents. And so then you have a task, very important, also to transmit to the grandchildren the Catholic faith, also by example. Yes, I would say uh, maybe for the youngest children who cannot concentrate themselves, it is sufficient maybe one decade for rosary. And the elder children, so they can continue to pray the entire rosary with the, with the parents, but maybe the, the little one, it's sufficient maybe for them, a shorter, maybe one decade, and then they can go to bed or, or before, it depends on the family. You can arrange. Uh, but the idea is that for little children, I think it could be too much, the entire rosary. But give them a shorter prayer. And so they will love the short prayer. And then when they are growing, they will add another one, another decade. And so, Organically, you can you can add this and grow. Uh, this is the general rule, I would say. Mm -hmm. And and then also, I think uh, when the, the children are growing, then they can understand. Uh, even when this prayer, the rosary, is sometimes a burden or so. The parents can teach this, the children that this brings you blessings. This is something positive. Because when you are learning in school, it's also sometimes you have to, to make some effort. Without effort, you cannot, you cannot get a good diploma in school or in the profession. Why not? 
to do some effort also in prayers, uh, but this is, but try to to, speak, to explain to the children that this is out of love for God. Not only to do a duty, but only to, to show them this is now a time which you are giving exclusively to God, who is our Father, who is who gave us all what you have, who is so good with us, who gave his his uh, life and blood for us on the cross, and so on. And then you can give to him maybe these 20 minutes or half an hour. So when you explain the meaning of the, to, to give the prayer out of love and, and gratitude to God. And the other aspect also, I think in the education, the aspect of sacrifice, but in a positive way, that sometimes we have to, to do some renounce sacrifices in order to be stronger spiritually. And uh, like we do uh, bodily exercise, physical exercises, or others in the school. So, so also in in religious life, we have to to show the positive meaning of sacrifice. Also, uh, I would say to every Catholic father, you are a kind of Joseph. Because there is no better example of a Catholic father than St. Joseph. Because God gave this man as an example also. It means a Catholic father, I think, has to give more an example. Not so much with words, but with his example. And show the children really this paternal uh, goodness, this uh, this this paternity. I mean that this that the children can trust in him, that he he protects them, and simply gives an example. And so, therefore, a father have to measure his words. Because he's an example, especially then for the boys when they are growing, and uh, to be to be just. And when when uh, sometimes a father has to be also, uh, I mean, severe in some situations, then he has to do this out of love for the children. So the motivation. And show to them that this is for the benefit for these children. So, but the, the interior attitude of a father is, of course, the the selflessness, the self selfless, uh, to be really at a disposition for the children, for the family, protect them, and give an example. So, my my. My advice is more, dear fathers, give an example more than, than words. But give an example, especially prayer. And all, even fathers have to also exercise patience. Patience, and then God will provide. Sometimes one has to pray. They can resolve all the things. Pray and trust to God and he will resolve. And so, this is my advice to the fathers. The mothers, of course, uh, she is the heart of the family. Uh, and this is so beautiful vocation, to be a heart. And here, surely, uh, here is Our Lady, the, mother, the best mother, which we have is Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mother. And so, Every Catholic mother has to imitate her to be a good mother. And here, um, I think that the Catholic mother uh, should be um, 
try to be always with the children, close to them, uh, accompany them, and then also, of course, to pray. This is the first task of a mother, uh, to, together with a father. And the mother is the heart. And dear mothers, try to, to, to show to your children really the love that they always can come to you in every situation. So the mother have to, the mother has to create an atmosphere of love in the family. Mm -hmm. And also in future, when the children are growing, then they are knowing I can come to my mother. Even when they are adult, they can come to the mother. She she can understand them, and uh, even when not always, maybe a situation where a mother can agree with some uh, decisions, but she has to show the love that she is the heart, where all the children can come. And so, this is my advice for a Catholic mother. For the children, it's of course my advice to you to always to pray to God that you will always keep love and reverence for your parents. This is inseparable. So you have to always to have a kind of respect to your parents. This is commanded by God. And, and also love. And pray always that you will keep this respect, loving, filial respect to your parents, even if maybe there will could be some conflicts or disagreements, but you have always, dear children, to pray that you will keep, in any case, a deep respect and love for your, for your parents, more gratitude for your parents. And of course, we have to pray for your parents also. This is to my to the children, I would say. Of course, try uh, the obedience will God always um, bless the obedience of the children when they are, of course, still uh, minor aged. Uh, of course, there could be some situations where. The adult children cannot obey the, the parents when, for example, one of the children will want to go to, to consecrate his life, her life to God, either in the priesthood or in the, in the monastery. And when the parents are contrary to this decision, I hope that the Catholic pa parents should not be contrary to such a uh, decision. But in this case, of course, the children have to obey God before the parents, but still keeping respect and love for, for the parents, always. And uh, even when there are some disagreements, maybe on, on, on issues which are of this daily life and so on, but keep always a respect for your parents and a love. This is a good question, and it's it's timely uh, because we are living in re really in a difficult time. But we have to know that every difficult time, God prepared for us special graces, which He gives for difficult time. I would say difficult time graces, and this He prepared for for the families who are struggling to keep the faith and the fidelity to God in this really unbelieving and uh, corrupt world which we are living now. And um, as um, St. Paul is writing to the Christians, the first generation, uh, live as um, children of God in midst of a corrupted and perverted society. This road already St. Paul. So we are now facing maybe a, even a worse situation than then. But you have to trust that God will 
gives you and is giving you special graces when you are keeping your faith and continue your witness. And then I would say you have to say to stay and to teach your children to be witnesses. That this is the second name of a Christian. Say this from the from the little age. You are a Christian. You are a witness. And this is a beautiful task. And the other name of a Christian is be courageous. So, courageous. Uh, to be timid and political correct, it's the contrary to Christian. So, you are, you are a Christian boy, you are a Christian girl, you can say to your children, your second name is witness. To be a witness. And to be courageous. And this is this gives your dignity, uh, your personal dignity also, uh, enhances your personal dignity to be a courageous person. Uh, because you, you are faithful not to uh, ideology, but to Christ, who is a person, who is God, who is my Savior, who is my King, who is the King of Kings. To him I am. I am faithful. So we have to teach the children continuously this fidelity to Christ, or our Savior, the King, and our Lord. So, and then, also, I think it would be good to, to teach the children and to read them concrete examples from saints, from the lives of the saints. They are good literature we can we can read to them to the children good maybe of a martyr there there are, there are plenty of stories of good good examples of martyrs of all ages of all times of all state of lives children youth uh, adult person and so on priests and so you can uh, these give to this literature or to read the, or to look some good video or, or a film about courageous witness and this will be in the in the memory of the children when they will later when they from childhood they will remember this story of a good christian witness and they are also current witnesses, I mean, uh, from the recent persecution time, from the communists uh, also. We can find them in good literature also. So this, I would encourage this to, and for the boys, it would be good to, to train them, maybe in scout groups, in good Catholic, for, for the typical Manly courage. It's not only spiritual, but only also human uh, to improve this attitude of witness and courageous. Well, today, as I see in the Western, Western world, the public schools are so already contaminated with the anti-Christian ideology and the immorality and the gender ideology that I think it is quite impossible to send the children to these schools, to the public schools. At least we have to, when we have good Catholic schools who are, who are still independent and, and have a good uh, program even a good moral program also this will be also a good situ a good solution to send the children to good catholic schools i mean they have to be proven as catholic schools not only catholic schools by name but truly and so for example in france i have, have made some visits in france in good private catholic schools where a priest is a chaplain for example where in the school is a chapel and there is a holy mass every day. Those who, who want can come. And during the day, during the breaks, 
some children can go to the chapel and adore the Blessed Sacrament, and also creates a, a sense of community that, that we are not alone. Mm. Uh, this is uh, also a positive value of a good Catholic school. Uh, but if this is not possible, or for various reasons, then of course the homeschooling is a good solution uh, for education of the children. And maybe in this system of homeschooling, it could it would be good that uh, some families join together. This also fails to to spare uh, energy and 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 uh, and professors, but also to create a small community that the children can, because the children they want to to have friends uh, and to have a little community to uh, this is good for them I think that maybe not only uh, when it's possible I don't know it's, maybe it's not always possible but where it's possible it would be good join some families together for the children so that they can play together also this is very important for a child uh, that they can develop in playing with other children, in behavior also. Or to give a, a patron uh, to the home school, a saint, uh, maybe a youth saint, so it will be a patron, so they can invoke him first for protection, for help, and imitate him. So, and in homeschooling, it's also important maybe to develop also some um, recreation moments for children. It's so important to make some kind of, I would say, some kind of scout work with them. They can explore the nature and so it's always important also. Bes uh, of course, uh, besides the, the prayers uh, and the religious formation. Well, I think um, you have to, in this case, to to take account to your simply to your forces, forces physically and mentally, and do what you can not to overburden yourself because you have the mothers have still other children, they have homework, and so it should be also considered her task. As, as, as a housewife and the housework and and so therefore maybe to to distribute prudently the the amount of of lessons let us say for the homeschooling to reduce them uh, so that it's not harming or it's not so overloading you in, in an excessive manner or to invite maybe a teacher to the home for some classes, a teacher, let us say, mathematics or which is neutral, I mean, where you can invite some good person even who is not so believing, but he is giving this neutral scientific fact, geography or uh, but the other issues, which is more, more, uh, how do you say, delicate as history or as literature, so uh, it's entering the, um, the ideology, then you can keep for yourself. But the simple, the objective, scientific lessons, you can invite uh, another person to give this. So to equilibrate your for your uh, your capacity, I mean. I was not reading English, <laughs> uh, but I think simply the the good uh, the good lives of the saints. I mean, the, the art collections of the saints. It would be also good to to read them, and uh, there are in English also, the, the, for example, Butler. It's a, it's a, there are various volumes of Butler. Alban Butler for the life of saints, for example, and 
Yes. Or uh, others, more recent, who are good collections of biographies of saints or simply of heroic persons. Uh, so you can, you can find them and, and good stories. It's always important to give the children good examples, stories. Uh, or good, uh, maybe also t from history, uh, examples from history, uh, from church history or so, which are positive, which are have an uh, educational value. Uh, this, and then also possibly when the children are growing, apologetical literature, apologetics, defense of our faith. Here you can use, I think, a lot of material of Archbishop Fulton Sheen, his lectures, there are plenty apologetical themes. For example, um, even uh, they are very valuable uh, and for the English speaking world. Uh, the, the lessons of Fulton Sheen. Well, uh, his, his name was Alexei. Uh, uh, Alexei Zaritsky, he was a Ukrainian priest. Uh, he was born close to Lviv, uh, to, in the western Ukraine. And he, even though the Ukrainian Greek Catholic priests, they, they can marry, you know, they, they, there's a married clergy, but he um, consciously decided to be a celibate priest. And then he was a seminarian in order to dedicate himself completely to the souls, to the Lord. And even so, he had, he, he could be legitimately a marriage priest also, but he opt, he made the option to be a, a celibate priest, not a religious priest, but to be in the world, but a celibate priest. And so he was a very zealous, young priest in Ukraine, in his parish, and so, but then when came the communists, they forced all the Greek Catholic priests from Ukraine to to renounce the Catholic faith. It, it was meant to renounce the, the, the unity with the Pope, with, with Rome, and to accept the Orthodox Patriarchate of Moscow, and uh, and he was refusing this, and that, that, therefore he was arrested by the police, uh, by the secret KGB police, and was had to be judged in trial. And they, uh, they said to him, "You have not to renounce Christ, no, because the Orthodox Church we have the same sacraments." Yeah. You have only to renounce one point of the Catholic faith, the papacy. So one, only one point. And, and to accept to be Orthodox priest, not to be more in union with Rome. And then he answered, if I will renounce the papal primacy, the, the papacy, I will renounce the entire gospel. So it is, he answered in to the judge, it is for me the same as I would renounce the entire gospel. So he did not renounce the, the fidelity to the Roman apostolic see, and therefore he was imprisoned and put in prison. Even though I forgot to mention that before, they said to him, even you, we, you, we will make you a bishop. You can become a bishop, but only renounce uh, your fidelity to the Holy See and be independent from the Holy See. He said, no. And then he was uh, clearly conscious that what will be the consequences of his uh, fidelity. Prison, and then he was sent to Siberia, 
to various uh, camps of concentration where uh, people usually died because of these horrible uh, situations there, inhuman situations. And he remained faithful. And then, when he was freed from the camp, he was sent to Kazakhstan, from Siberia to Kazakhstan, to a kind of house arrest, domestic arrest. So he could not move. He had to, to remain there in the city and be always under the control of the secret service of the police. But he was hearing that there are so many Catholics without priests. It was in the 50s, uh, beginning of the 60s, last century. <clears throat> and so he was traveling all around the Soviet Union secretly. And uh, it was illegally, uh, it was against the law. Even he had no passport, they took him away. And so he was traveling all around only to save souls. And he was no, he was conscious that when the police will arrest him again, he will brought again to the camps. Uh, he could live in this house or where he was in, in Karaganda, in Kazakhstan, under house arrest at least. It would be better than in a camp of concentration. And so he, he traveled and, um, and so he came to my parents in the Ural Mountains where my parents were also, uh, under the situation of, uh, in internation, it is called when people are in a situation of internation. So the, the police is watching on, upon them. So this was the situation of my parents in the Ural Mountains. And there were thousands of Catholics there, Germans. And Father Alexei came secretly to them frequently. I mean, frequently, it was, it was may, maybe twice a year, it was frequently. Because before his arrival, the people had no priest for 10 years. No priest. 10 years without sacraments. So my parents, my grandparents, my grandmothers, they were living almost 10 years without sacraments, but they were keeping the Catholic faith in daily prayers of rosary, in daily reading of the catechism, short uh, parts of the catechism, of the good catechism, and the biblical stories. So and so the, the Holy Cross, the cross stations, and so they, they kept this. And they were baptizing the children, their own, by their own, because they were no priests. At least they could baptize their children. And, uh, and marry, and make the marriage, because according to the canon law, you know, that when one month is no priest, then the, the spouses can, uh, validly marry in the Catholic crowd before two, two testimonies. And so th these Catholics did so, this form of, of marriage in the, in the uh, emergency, and baptizing the children they, by themselves. The mothers and the grandmothers were baptizing the children. So myself, I was baptized by my mother. And, and so, um, and then came the father, and he spent there, all the days, and he was hearing confessions days and nights, because you imagine thousands, thousands of people, when he came only once or twice a year, they, they have to confess. And he did not know when the police can, can come, because in every moment the police could come, and it happened sometimes. And so, he even could not rest because his conscience was so uh, delicate that he said, I cannot rest now because then uh, maybe 10 or 20 people cannot 
receive absolution from the sins I have to, to confess. Them. And so, and then uh, he celebrated Mass always in the night and then gave Holy Communion and then he was fleeing to another point, to another place, always disguised uh, in, in another clothes. And once it was a situation where he was celebrating, starting to celebrate Mass. My mother was present, and the police were, were, were arriving. And then, still not yet entering, but because the, the Germans, they lived together in a ghetto, in a part of, of the city, a small. And so the police were already entering one part of this ghetto. And then my mother said to him, Father Alexi, come, I have, to, I have to, to hide you because the police is not coming. Mm -hmm. And she took him and she brought him out of the German ghetto to another part, to another street where Russian people were living. And then there was a small room where he, she put him in this room and locked the room. But before she locked, she, she uh, left something to eat there for him, so he could eat. And and now he, then she said, "Now, Father Alexi, you can rest. <laughs> I will lock you. <laughs> At least you can rest, and you can eat something. And when it will dark, we we will flee from here." And so it was winter. Uh, and so when it was becoming dark, maybe five o'clock in, in, in the afternoon, uh, she came with her aunt, aunt the, the sister of my grandfather, and they both took him and they were fleeing. And so my elder siblings, they were little children. And so my mother left them by her mother, by my, by my grandmother, and these two ladies took Father Alexei, in the night, they're fleeing 12 kilometers by snow, minus 30 degrees below zero, uh, frozen. And then they came to the next sta railway station, a small village, and then they were waiting for the train, that he can flee with the train to another city. My mother bought him the ticket for Father Alexei, and and this was, was a, a very small waiting room. They had to wait still for the train to come. And so, and suddenly, the door is opening, and the police is entering, and and going directly to Father Alexei. And he is seeing how the police is coming to him. And on his side was my mother, and the other side was the home. And the policeman asked him. Where you are going? And he was so shocked, he could not answer. And my mother, she said, this is our friend. We are accompanying him. And my mother took the ticket and gave this to the policeman and, and said, see, here, here is the ticket. And the police was seeing the ticket and said to the to Father Alexei, please do not enter the last car of the train. It will be dismembered in the next station. I wish you a good trip and went away, went out. And no one saw this policeman after. There was no. And Father Alexei said to my mother, this was an angel whom God sent us. And I will be all my life thankful to you what you have done for me. Because it was dangerous for my mother. When she would be arrested, she would come to the prison, of course. And she had two little children in, in the house. And and then the Father Alexei said to my mother, in, in every Holy Mass, I will pray for you and for your children. And when God allows, I will visit you once again. <clears throat> And, and after this, <clears throat> my parents moved from Ural Mountains. After one or two years, they were freed 
and they, they could move. And they moved from Ural Mountains to Central Asia, to Kyrgyzstan, where I was born. It is in the Central Asia, south of Kazakhstan, on the border of China. <clears throat> and, and then we had a little house there. And he came, he found us, he traveled a thousand kilometers from Karaganda to Kyrgyzstan to, to find us. And then he celebrated the Holy Mass secretly in our house. And I was a little child. I was one year old. And, uh, and my mother put the cradle uh, on the side where he was celebrating. So I was already his altar boy when I was one year old. <laughs> and then he blessed me, said my mother and the other siblings, and then he, he had to flee. And then when he entered again after our visit, uh, Kazakhstan, he was arrested immediately by the secret police, KGB, and put to the prison, to the camp of concentration. And there he had to suffer. He was tortured and suffered one and a half year. And then of the consequences of this, he died. And therefore he is beatified as a, as a martyr. And so in this, um, this Father Alexei, uh, he, he said uh, that the Catholic faith is our greatest richness. And this is the faith of our fathers. We have to keep this faith faithfully. And then he said also, when you have all the richness of this life, but you have not a faith, you have nothing. But when you have the faith, the Catholic faith, and even you have almost nothing of the material goods, you have all, you possess all things. This he, several times he repeated this. And he experienced this in his life. And so this is for me, uh, uh, a modern saint of our times, Father Alexei, and also he left a very good uh, advice for families. I would share this with you. In one of his letters to his brother, his brother was married. He gave some advice and he said, here on earth there is uh, no more happy life than the life of a husband and a wife who are Catholic and faithful and who love each other and respect each other. So he wrote. And then he said, a marriage life, the life, uh, the life in marriage is a perpetual school of love. He wrote his to his brother and said, that and and the the secret of family life, especially the the marriage life, the secret is that you have continuously to exercise yourself in acts of self renunciation. So some so sometimes you have to to see it, to yield to the other, to, and then the other to mutually. He said, it has to be mutually. And this is the secret that we have always to, um, out of love for each other, we have to renounce some, sometimes to our words, to, to be silent, to accept something to, from the other, even when, when I cannot, but and the other the same, so it is a mutual. So it, we have husband and wife; they have to exercise this, and this is also a grace. So this is the task of the mutual school of love," said Blessed Alexei of a married couple. And my, as I told once already, 
once one time my mother uh, she she told me always when I was a priest I was in Rome and I was calling her regularly by phone and the last word which he she spoke to me always you remain faithful to Jesus this was and then when I became bishop she was still alive <clears throat> and one priest <clears throat> a friend of our family he came to congratulate my mother with my appointment and she answered that my son be became a bishop it's not it is not so much for me important but for me it's the most important that my son remains faithful to Jesus <laughs> and I'm so grateful to this uh, and so and my father he, he always he, he very much loved my mother and when we already were adult the fourth siblings and then we sometimes when we met together with, with the parents we all we were already adult i was already a priest and the others were married and then when we were sitting together and sometimes my father started to to cry and said to us oh my children I I will say now to you I have the best wife which God gave me in my life this is your mother even when they were already in aged he when we were little he he did not say to us because we did not understand but when we were already adult then he said this to us and this is a beautiful witness also for the catholic um husbands i would say please show to your children that you love and respect your wife and of course mutually also the the, the wife says to respect and ensure but this is so important in a family life to exercise this and to always to uh you know another what what i would share also my parents they said to us often times even my father uh, these words of the lord seek first first the kingdom of god and all the rest will be given to you and they said to us children that they follow these words in all their life when they married seek first the kingdom of god and his will and the rest god will give you and so it was our experience in my life we we were living in difficult situations in the united in the soviet union but we were not rich no but it was only sufficient for us to live in a, in a, with dignity but we were not rich we had not but it was good uh, and god provided always the necessary for us and in a, that's so we could live in with dignity not with richness and wealth no but with dignity and but we were strengthened with the faith and so and when god will give you that more then you have to accept this with gratitude more wells to do good works my final words first i would like as a bishop to thank you good catholic fathers good catholic mothers who are hearing me and especially those who are generously uh large families you have you have accepted the children which god gave you i would like to thank you and even the sacrifices but it is worthwhile these sacrifices because you gave to god 
uh, citizens of heaven. Your children will be citizens of heaven, we hope, for all eternity. And so, and so please continue your generosity. God will always, God is most, more generous when you are generous with him and accepting the children with love. Every child accept with love, every child. Even, it, it, even if it will be the tens and so on, but accept with love him. And God will provide. And so this is my gratitude to you, dear parents of large families. And then also thank you for your uh, witness. Uh, in this difficult life which you are now doing with homeschooling, please continue this. Maybe it would be good to make a um, group of families in your neighborhood and strengthen mutually to do some meetings maybe and uh, to have a priest who is uh, a good priest, who is uh, really an authentic priest, who can give you good advices as a father spiritual father to your families, to this group of families maybe, because and pray that God will give you a good priest in your neighborhood or in your area where, where you are living. Maybe it would be sufficient that this priest can come periodically, not so often, uh, but it would be sufficient. As in our time, Father Alexei came twice a year and then uh, it, it, it was sufficient then for us. He gave us so much spiritual nourishment and well and today the priest can give you talks through uh, skype and, and 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 zoom and other means so it is also possible i mean so this is what i would say and then continue to of course the prayer in the family it's 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 the most important and and ask the lord and the holy family that you will practice, always strive to practice the mutual love and forgiveness and patience. This is so necessary and so beautiful. And then uh, consecrate your always repeated, repeatedly to the Holy Family. Dominus Vobiscum et Com Spiritu Tuo et benedictio Dei Omnipotentis, Patris, et Fili, et Spiritu Sancti, descendat super vos, et maniat semper. Amen. Continue your good work. Continue.